Hi everyone, this is Audrey with The Creator's Attic. Do you want to know what happens when coffee dyeing, <laughs> coffee dyeing of uh, such things as this um, type of paper that you probably have tried your hand at doing, when it meets distress spray stains? Yes, I did some experimenting and I had several failures with different um, things I tried, but this seemed to be the most successful and I wanted to share it with you. Um, this is a, an index card that I dyed and um, it comes out completely different if you start um, with an already coffee dyed sheet as opposed to a stark white sheet. Um, it just takes the dye totally to a different level when you, instead of using coffee dyed paper already and then mixing the distress, distress sprays, you actually get Victorian looking colored paper with the coffee dye look. Let me show you a few examples that I have. This is one that I did, well you can see. I don't wanna set it close to this, tri this tray because I don't want it to, to get wet. These are dry, but um, this is actually um, a combination of picked raspberry and and coffee uh, very concentrated coffee and um, water so I mix just use I don't use hot water I don't heat it up I just use instant coffee um, I usually use cafe Bastello, which is a fairly cheap brand that you can get um, or either the classic rose from Great Value from Walmart, but I pretty much do almost a 50-50 mix with just regular temperature tap water and the other half with my um, coffee. So I pretty much just um, let those mix, I mix those together, but I, I don't heat them. So there's that process for you. Now I'm going to add another layer onto it. Today I'm going to be showing you how I have the trial and error of how I have mixed um, other um, dyes, distress sprays to um, the, with the coffee dyeing process. Okay, so this one was a little bit of experiment, of an experiment with, um, I believe I used Dusty Concord, no, it was Seedless Preserves and Picked Raspberry and Coffee Dye. And then this one, and if I, I just prefer to my mixture of, of coffee and water as coffee dye, so just for reference. This one was just regular coffee and dusty Concord, and these colors are fantastic. I'm going to make a spring journal. I have tried just using the Distress Sprays. I have tried just using um, the um, food coloring. I have tried inking paper with distress inks and everything and it it give all has different looks but there is sometimes you just want to get away from this i've made the mistake of making a journal with all coffee dyed pages before and it was a disaster just because i there were other it limited my options in the journal and i really just wanted a differentiated um set of papers so Getting to it, I'm going to show you um, a few supplies that I have, and I left one in the restroom, in the bathroom. I'll be right back. I was letting these dry earlier from where I had previously um, been experimenting, and <clears throat> these are just 30 milliliter, I believe that's two tablespoons or thereabouts, um, of from cough medicine. Um, that I have accumulated and I always save these because they bend like this and they're easy to pour. Um, I've brought along too some of these spray bottles. These are two ounce spray bottles. You can get them in a set of two at the Dollar Tree. They're fabulous to have on hand. Also, you or you can just get some of these um, little travel bottles like this at Walmart for like less than a dollar in the travel section. Um, okay, so I am going to show you what I did, and by trial and error, I'm just going to show you pretty much the way that I go about doing this, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, first of all, um, this is, also I wanted to say that this is the one that I keep in my, the coffee mix that I keep in my drawers, 
in my craft drawer and I don't refrigerate this. And if you want to get away with not refrigerating your coffee dye, which I usually try to refrigerate it, um, but you can get away with it for several months by just putting a little bit of, of regular alcohol in it, not the drinking kind of alcohol. <laughs> that may work too, I don't know, but I'm just talking about regular rubbing alcohol. Um, and I kind of use a little bit stronger, 90% or so, um, just because I do work with alcohol ink as well. So, um, okay, I'm gonna focus more now on what I'm doing at hand so we can get on with this and I don't have a long video, so you can try this yourself, get to trying this yourself. All right, so I'm, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take one of my small cups and you can do this and you don't have to have these exact things to do this, but this is just the way that I find um, is easiest to do it. This is a cookie tray just a deep cookie tray is probably like um, a little over an inch or so deep in depth and this is actually in my craft room so um i am not around any kind of method to anything like um a sink or anything that i can get to right now so that's why i'm using this it's great um, and you don't have to worry about your dyes unless they're alcohol inks getting mixed in with your by coloring your coffee sheet. Just wash it soon after you use it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna start out with my concentrated mix. I put about half of it was a tablespoon of coffee. Okay, now in the other, I'm going to decide what color I want to use. Um, I know that the picked raspberry works well and the seed this preserves work well and a couple of other colors, but I want to try a little bit of, um, I want to try a little bit different color. I want to try this picked raspberry. So I'm just gonna spray a few sprays. It's about eight into this cup. And I have tried using the reinkers for that and the distress oxides and food coloring. And let me tell you, it was a disaster. Um, the oxides don't mix well because of the way that they react with water. They just don't mix well in this way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I don't mess this up, I want to get it to the, to the color that I want. So first of all, I don't want to waste this um, distress ink. So I'm going to just add a little bit of coffee to it and swirl it around and see if I like the way it's, um, it turns out. And how I'm going to find that out is I'm just going to pour it into this bottle and the spray bottle. And I'm just going to stick in my mister here. And I have a few pieces of test paper. This is, I'm just using 20 pound copying paper, white copy paper. I'm just gonna kind of spray it. Hang on, I need to, I actually wash these off, so I need to get the uh, actual mixture through the, through the um, sprayer. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna get a, sample, just a little sample piece of paper, and I'm gonna spray it. Okay, I think I, uh, my spray bottle is clogged, but let's just see what I have if I, okay, I smooth it out a little bit, and, and this is what I have. I have a little bit of, this is not obviously the way I want it to turn out, but this is the color that I have. It has a very aged look, but it also has, um, you can see the purple and I mean, yeah, the the pink in it. Okay, it has almost like a vintage strawberry look and that's super cool. But I want to add some more into the bottle and I think I'm going to have to switch, switch up um, my nozzles here because I think my other one was a little jammed. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try it again and I think I had a little bit more seedless preserves than I wanted um, that I had a little bit more than I wanted. Um, um, and so I, I think I want a little bit more coffee this time. So I'm just going to put like four sprays in here. And then I'm going to put the rest of this coffee in here. Swirl it around and just play with it. You can play with it to get the desired colors that you want. Um, also, if the colors come out a little bit dark, you can always add a little bit of water to it. Um, but I would do that right away. You don't go back and wet them after you've already sprayed them because it, they, uh, it's just the way that 
it so the paper soaks it up. It just won't work well. Okay, so I have this and I'm going to test it again. Now, I would like to go for a very, like a rose colored look, but I want that Victorian rose look. So let's try this again on a piece of paper. Hopefully my thing won't get clogged. Okay, get it started here. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, here's is the color that is I'm getting now. Okay, this is actually quite dark, but you remember that it will dry. I'm just gonna kind of smear it in here so it can just kind of look a little bit. Okay, and this is what I have. I have more of a brown color with a little bit of a rosy color. And I like that, I do like that. So I can play with that. Now I just feel like I just need to add a little bit of, um, I just wanna lighten it up a tish. So I'm going to just take my spray bottle that I keep of water and just put a few sprays, but not much, cause it's easy to water this stuff down too much. And uh, okay, so let's try this again. Have a little bit more in here. Um, and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and just go with what I have here. And I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way. I did bring in some paper towels here. I'm gonna move all this stuff out of the way and bring in my regular standard 20 pound copy paper. And um, so I'm really making spring journals and I, 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 if I said this, pardon me, I'm sorry, it is very, very late. It's a, like, it's really almost 5 a.m. but this is when I get the most, most of my work done because I get so bothered during the day with, with folks and that's no problem, it's just that I just like complete quiet, um, especially when I'm trying to make videos. So I'm gonna lay this down on my sheet and I'm going to spray it. Okay, so attempt to spray it. I am not sure what is going on with these spray nozzles. Um, it wasn't doing this to me earlier. Um, and I had the same stuff in here. So I don't know if these Dollar Tree spray bottles aren't aren't working as well or what, but I'm gonna switch this up again. And I'm going to try just using the nozzle from this other, this Walmart bottle and see if it will come out a little bit better for me. Okay, here we go. I have it coming out. Now, I want to kind of evenly spray this and get an even amount. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna kind of smear it in before it has time to set. Um, and it, you see the sprays on there, the spray look. I don't necessarily, I'm gonna actually have to swap this. I, I don't necessarily want this splattered look on here and I want it to go on evenly, but for some reason I'm having, as soon as I go on camera, all of my spray bottles want to fail. So this is so not cool. Okay, <laughs> all right, not cool. So let's try the trusty Walmart. It may just be that I, I did wa wash them out, but it may just be that maybe um, my mixture may be um, clogging them up, but it wasn't earlier. So <sighs> let's try this again. Okay, what I'm gonna do is take another sheet out. I'm going to spray it. Okay, this is much better. And I am probably spraying about 10 inches away from the paper. And I am just, coating this and look at that dusty rose color. I just love it. It has like a vintagey type thing. Now, I am going to use my hand to just kind of smooth this over. I don't want to soak my paper. I am not going to put these in the oven either. I'm not a fan of that. I don't like oven marks on my paper, um, nor do I like putting it in the oven in general because I just don't want a disaster to happen. <laughs> But um, anyway, I also like doing it like this because if you don't wet it too much, see, I haven't just soaked it, obviously, because it hasn't really come through this side. It'll dry pretty quickly on a plastic tarp. And in this case, I use um, from Walmart. You can get like a, the party, the plastic party liners, and you can get several in a pack. And I just cut them up and spread them out on my floor and use them for my drying tarps. And um, you can use a heat gun if you want, but I've found that when I use heat with this coffee paper, I mean with this um, copy paper, it really does 
um, wrinkle it more. Whereas if I just don't saturate it so much. Okay, so here's what I have. And it will look completely different when dried. It um, will be lighter and it will have more. Um, okay, see how it's kind of still wanting to have the spray look. I, I think I need to wet it just a little bit more. But this paper is not tear, wanting to tear when I pull it up as long as I'm very gentle and um, grab it by the corners because it is not sopping wet or soaking wet. I think sopping must, sopping wet must be something we say around here in the South. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just put a little bit more on here and just kind of rub it in. And yes, you probably will get messy hands doing this, but like I said, it, it'll honestly just a little bit of wash and I'll get it off. Dry this side again. And it's just a process. You know what? This is a different batch of, um, of, uh, stain each time so you just will have to play with it to see how long it takes and um so we've kind of gone over several bumps here too so but um, i'm going to take this up and i have it like this i'm just kind of doing this to get off any excess just very gently and now i'm going to take this over see it's not dripping or anything Let me take it and i'm just going to put it over here on my tarp and i'm going to wipe up wipe this up and I don't want to discard what I have left of this because I'm probably what I'll do is mix it in with something else later on. So I'm going to like maybe with another color because um, I think that that rose would be gorgeous with um, maybe a blue color. Actually, let's try that. Um, I didn't try the blue earlier. So let me try that. I'm going to put this aside though, I'm going to get a clean cup. I'm going to, actually, I kind of want to swirl this out a little bit out of this bottle. Like I said, I don't have a sink or anything close by, so I'm having to kind of use what I have. So let me just kind of push this off into a bottle like that. And I think I do want to spray some of this water out, so I'm not getting, okay, let me just spray. And get this dusty Concord out of this bottle. Um, like I said, I had obviously had several bottles hanging out, but only one of them has wanted to stay tried and true with me and be, go through this process. Okay, so let's try it. We're going to take, I'm going to take another clean container and I am going to put in, like I did earlier, about half of my half like a tablespoon or so of coffee dye and the reason why I'm doing this in such small amounts is because I'm only wanting a few sheets to go in my journal I'm not mass um, making <clears throat> any paper at the moment so um, I'm just making a few pages just for fun I'm gonna put in I put in about seven squirts here and then I think I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this because I added water to the coffee dye last time. So just put a little bit and we have about like this. Now, sometimes blue with brown kind of creates a gray and I'm really hoping that's not what happens here. Um, so let me just stir this around a little bit. I don't want a gray color, please don't be gray. I have not yet tried it with the blue colors. So we'll see. Okay, and that was what I was afraid of. Okay, it's kind of given me this grayish green color. So it's not exactly what I wanted. But I am going to go in and add a little bit of this dye that I had from the red. And let's see if maybe by any chance that will take some of that muddy look out. Probably not. I may have to retreat and try a different, um, wrong thing there, okay, try a different thing. This actually may give me an interesting looking antique green color, or it just may look like moss, I'm sorry. Okay, that is a very interesting color. I could live with that. It doesn't look, it actually did not turn out gray or grungy, it actually turned out to be a um, a very mossy color green so I can work with that um, I guess I just didn't 
really, blue is just really not in the cards at the moment. I may have to play around with blue a little bit more. Okay, so I ended up with like a green, and I could do a green page. Um, that would be fun. But let's go on and see what else we have. Here's the other little sheet that I first did. Um, that is starting to dry a little bit, okay? But, okay, obviously we found out that blue doesn't work. I don't want to spend too much time, um, and I do not know how to pause my camera yet. So, um, <laughs> so let me just rinse this out, and I'm going to rinse these out and get some fresh stuff. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. It's just, uh, I'm just learning to video with this camera. So, um, I do, I am very curious, though, to see how this mixture that I have turns out because it's actually starting to turn kind of a cool green color. So, I may have to revisit that idea. But I want to go now and I want to move back and back up just a little bit. And I want to look at um, Dusty Concord again. And I'm, I really want kind of a plum color. Um, this Cetus Preserves that I used earlier did give me a little bit more red um, tint to it. But I think what I want to do is um, I'm going to try like maybe four sprays of the Dusty Concord. Okay. And then I'm going to try like four sprays of the Picked Raspberry. And then I'm going to take my coffee again, <clears throat> put it in this other cup. I'm going to again do about a tablespoon. And let's see. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to this to kind of see what we're working with. Oh, see, that's a pretty color. It almost, it's like a very pretty color. I'm going to add in just a little bit of coffee, first of all, um, and see if what that looks like. So, let me put this in my bottle. That way I don't end up with like a, a disaster like I did earlier. Okay, let's see. This is the rest of that mix. I'm gonna do this in here like this and I may end up pulling back out and I keep wanting to put the wrong, okay, here we go. I keep wanting to put the wrong thing. Let me get some of that um, blue out that I had in here before. Okay, I may have a little bit too much red in this this time. Okay, it looks kind of like I have sort of what I had before, maybe with a little bit more purple in it. Okay, if I dab that with my paper towel, it lightens it up, but that's just another thing. Again, this is still drying. This is actually a cool little green color it turned out to be. The coffee will change the color a little bit, so... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put in a little bit more. Um, I'm going to put in a little bit more. I'm going to wash, rinse this out. Okay. I'm going to put in a little bit more coffee into this one. And I'm not throwing this away. I'm just going to put... Um, a little bit more purple in there. I'm going to go in, and you can, this is the fun thing, you're not using but a few sprays of this stuff. And you're just basically, I'm going to try the Dusty Concord. I mean, uh, along with the Dusty Concord, the Seedless, per, I'm going to put the Seedless Preserves in here. I'm going to just spray it into the cup. Because now, I kind of know what I'm working with. And, whoops, okay. Now I'm going to add it to that mix before and you can just play with your dyes that is what's so fun about having um your stuff there aren't any rules i'm sure you've heard that several million times maybe not quite that many but there are no rules with what you can do with your toys these are your adult toys they are yours to play with add a little bit more water you can do what you want to with them and you can try and you will fail but I mean that's the way things get in invented and we discover new things um and so um I'm looking at it that way this did um let's try a different color 
I did, like I said, do several experiments before this. So um, I do know that this is this works. I'm just tried a few different other things that didn't with different colors and they just didn't quite work out like I wanted them to but that's okay I really just wanted to get these purple and pinks in my spring journal okay so I'm going to I'm going to do spray this and I am getting more of a purple tint to this than to my other one even though it looks a little bit more it's not quite as red looking as the other one. This actually has more of a brown look to it. So I may not put Seedness Preserve, I mean, I may only use um, Dusty Concord in my next attempt, but okay. So this is a very pretty color and that went much quicker since I didn't have any hangups with the bottle, the sprayer. Okay, so now I've just flipped it over and I'm spraying it again. And this is making, which absolutely makes gorgeous paper because you know how when um, you coffee dye paper, the coffee is uh, make is a little bit, the, the color is a little bit darker as it travels out and the capillary action occurs and uh, just the way it absorbs and then it gets to the end and it's like it doesn't have anywhere else to go really. Um, so it kind of stays absorbed there more concentrated on the ends of your coffee dyed paper coffee paper that you dye The same thing happens with this you get a more natural Looking color that settles a little bit darker on the outside So you don't have to sit there and ink the sides of your paper You already have it done naturally for you as you do with the coffee dyed. Okay, so this is a totally different shade. This is actually a much dustier looking shade than the other color I had. So again, this will dry. And so I'm going to set this one aside. Wow. And I can see that those two down here, I would move the camera, but I'm afraid of what would happen if I did <laughs> move it at the moment. I will show you um, as some of them dry a little bit more what we have. And you, you can see what some of them look like already. Okay. For the last thing, I am going to try, um, go back to just my Dusty Concord, okay? And I'm going to just put it and spray a few in the cup. One, two, three, four, maybe five. Okay, I just really am wanting to get a lavender purple look. I just, I don't, I keep going for that look. Okay, let me pour this other mixture out. I don't want to waste it. This is great for um, doing smaller sheets as well, or um, if you want to use scrapbooking paper and you want to just um, have the scrapbook paper. Um, you know how it's if it's one sided, it's all if you put it in your journals and sometimes it's just th that white color, and that's not necessarily what we want um, on some sides, and it can be a pain in the journal um, <laughs> sometimes. Um, as I found out to try to color that after it's in the journal or, um, or whatever. So I am actually just um, going ahead and, okay, this one is stuck. Okay, I don't have another cup and I don't want to turn around and waste time. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna empty this cup into this. Okay, I'm going to take the Dusty Concord and then I'm going to take my coffee mixture again. I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to this distress to see what kind of color I'm working with, okay? And I can see a violet. I may want to um, bring that down a little bit and I have this purplish liquid that's a little bit more toned down. So I'm going to add in just like maybe part of this coffee dye. I don't wanna end up with an overwhelming um, saturation of color and end up getting some gray again, some gray color, so. Hopefully that won't happen in this instance. Okay, it's just kind of hard to see. It looks kind of just like regular coffee dye. I'm gonna just kind of spray, but it's not, we know it's not. Okay, I'm going to just kind of spray this stuff out of the, it's probably much easier when you have <laughs> a sink close by, but for the purposes of this video, I am using my craft desk. Okay, I'm getting this out. I don't want, my other color coming up, okay. 
All right, I'm gonna try a sample piece of paper because I have this feeling it's not the color that I want yet. Okay, I have this gray looking stuff. I don't want the gray looking stuff and it's not quite white enough. Um, so I'm going to add this little bit of mixture into my picked raspberry mixture. And I'm just gonna put it in here and we'll see what color we get. Hopefully not a gray. I may have mixed too many colors. It may just wanna work uh, much better with just the white colors. I mean the, not white colors, I'm looking at this white paper. Um, it may just wanna work better with the reds and the pinks and maybe just some of the, the um, lighter purples. It may just be, there's just too much of a blue pigment in here for this to pick up on. So I'm out of sample paper too, so I'm just gonna have to go for it. Um, and see what happens. Okay, ooh. Okay, now I am seeing more of the color that I want to come through. I'm actually not seeing enough purple. So I'm going to try putting in a little bit of shaded. Uh, I haven't even opened shaded lilac, so I'm not going to do that retreat. Signus Reserves. I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there. So now we have several different colors. And I did this um, not on video. Let me try every nozzle but the one that I need. Okay. Um, to see how it would work so I didn't have all this trial and error going on. Apparently, um, that's just not working out. Okay, there we go. There's the color I'm wanting. And it does have a little bit of a grayish look to it, but it is not gray. It's actually purple and it will dry. This was the color I was looking for. So I'm going to take a sheet like this and through a mixture of the sprays, I found the color purple that I want and I actually have a good bit of it. So here we go. This is a like a Victorian velvet purple color and this is beautiful okay so see i got it by just um, playing a little bit and the thing is when you use the distress dyes on paper you i end up using so much of it that i end up just going through bottles just after i mean so fast with this mixing it with a coffee dye not only do you get the um more antique look and you get the coffee look in there already but you also get um you um, also get your um, more bang for your buck, so to speak. Okay, I'm not saturating this completely. I'm just gonna kinda let that sit in. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna try this, and for some reason, there we go. See, and just spraying all around it. And this is going to be a gorgeous color. I can just, I can't wait till this dries. And I probably won't be able to show it to you on camera. Oh, by the way, I have not, while I'm doing this, I have not abandoned my um, using field guides um, series. I just was playing around and got so excited about playing with my Distress um, spray inks and coffee dye that I just, I had to share this with you, so. Okay, I'm going to flip this back over. Oh my goodness, that is going to be such a gorgeous purple color. I can't wait. And I still have all this left. Okay, so we're just going to kind of get a few spots. And I think I'm about ready to go with putting this out to dry. And I can sh we'll go back and I'll show you what some of the other ones have started looking like as they've dried. And they will dry about at about maybe, probably... Um, with maybe 30% less color darkness as you see here because you know that probably from coffee dyeing that your papers look darker and when they dry they lighten up so okay so I have this um, gorgeous color on this I hope you can see that okay let me show you the first one this is with um, the seedless preserves that is just so pretty and it will definitely lighten because that's pretty much what I had when I had did this one. So you can tell the difference. Um, I don't want to mess my, this one up, but you can kind of, yeah, kind of show you, see the difference once it dried from the one that's wet and the one that's dry. Okay, let me grab the second one we did. 
second one that we did was, um, I don't know, <laughs> a mixture of some concoction that we did that had a little bit more of a um, brownish, dusty rose, a little bit more than the other one. The other one kind of had like a Victorian strawberry look to it. Okay, and the last one, which has not had a chance to dry, but you can, I just want you to see the difference of the purple. You have this very vintage looking purple and this will lighten as it dries and I can't wait to see how um, gorgeous this is going to be when it dries. So, uh, you've seen it here with me. You've seen me, what happens in real life in the craft room. I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, please visit my Etsy store, The Creator's Attic, where I have all kinds of um, things for junk journals and other um, crafting. I also have great ephemera kits that have all authentic vintage and antique things that date back to the you know the latter half of the 18th of the 1800s in there so um just check out my store i have wonderful ephemera kits with a huge variety in there and that's the crafter's attic on etsy i mean the creator's attic not the crafter's attic it's late okay the creator's attic on etsy and also uh, if you like this video and you want to be um, shown um, when new videos come out, please like, hit the bell for subscribe, and even share it if you like. I want to throw this in here really quick. This was a piece of white, um, pearly looking trim that I had, and I sprayed it down with some of the um, purplish ink that I had earlier, and it's dried. And I don't know if you can really see this. I'm going to put it against a piece of a white sheet of paper. How pretty! that turned out and it will look really nice to me grab some this coffee dyed um, it would look very nice against just regular coffee dyed paper so um and it looks very uh, um old it doesn't look dyed like obviously dyed dyed it has like an almost like an aged purple look to it as if it's been sitting somewhere a hundred years but anyway um you can do this with your spray this on your um white and off-white trim as well and let it dry the same way but anyway um y'all have a great time and enjoy this week and please visit me again soon and i will be putting out a video sometime next week hopefully so stay tuned thank you bye bye